man, it's just about time. Depending on where you're at in the world, Vanguard launches here in just a couple of hours, starting on that global rollout. Today in this video, I want to take some time and talk about 10 tips that I think you should consider when going into launch here. Some things that start at the basics, things like some settings you just jump in and immediately change, but down to then also things like in-game play tips from what we've learned from the beta and what we can expect with the launch of the game. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Add a tip here to this list if you guys would like. Help out your fellow gamer that may be looking in the comments for even more tips. Feel free to share it down there in the comments. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. Let's get ambitious. Let's aim for 3,000 likes on this video. You guys absolutely crushed that as of yesterday, so I'm confident we can do it again. As well, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're gonna be keeping you up to date with any and everything you need to know in regards to Vanguard here with the launch and beyond. With nearly 60% of viewers not subscribed, we're on that road to half a million subscribers, so if you guys would like to stay up to date and join the community, I'd love to have you. And finally, our launch content starts as of tomorrow, so make sure you stick it here on the channel. We got three videos coming throughout the day and multiple uploads every day following that for at least a little while. So make sure you stick it here on the channel. But that said, let's jump right in the tips for launch. So starting basic, when you jump into Vanguard for the first time, one of the things that I definitely suggest here for launch is checking out your settings. We're gonna have a video breaking down all of the settings coming soon, what you should be using for things like your best quality, your best possible performance and things like that. We'll be breaking that down in a dedicated video here shortly, but a short list of stuff that you should always check out are your quality settings, sensitivity and controller button layout, sprint settings. One thing that I always make sure that I end up turning off here just so that it's a little bit clearer of a picture for you when you end up playing the game is I adjust my motion blur and film grain settings. Motion blur, turn that off for both world and weapon. It's meant to make the game look a little bit more cinematic, but also in a gameplay setting where every bit of graphical detail can help you out in something that is so fast killing as say Call of Duty, you want to make sure that you're not hindering yourself here at that. Same thing with film grain at a distance, you might not notice it as much, but should make some of that quality a little bit better. Then you end up having your sprint settings. I end up always jumping over to automatic attack sprint. I like to rush. Oftentimes that gets me killed though, but it is what it is. Find what works for you. And finally, for my console friends, don't forget the most important one here now for Vanguard. You're going to have the ability to change your FOV slider, at least on next gen consoles. Admittedly, I don't think that has been clarified just yet if it's on all consoles, even on last gen, but that FOV slider is going to be available within Vanguard for console users. So check out the suite of settings that you can end up changing and optimizing your game with. Now, one big thing that I absolutely recommend right off the rip, really really comes down to how you think about this setting in particular, that being your crossplay options. Some people love crossplay. They love being able to find a game immediately on top of being able to play with your friends, no matter what platform they're on or no matter what generation they're on. But then some also really dislike it and both sides, there's no wrong answer. It just comes down to what you prefer. So absolutely check out, disable or enable it depending on what you personally feel about the experience. But going a little further into the actual game here, one huge tip is to take advantage of the expanded creator class this time. With Vanguard, we have the most extensive creator class that we've seen so far, taking Modern Warfare's Gunsmith and making it a little bit more in-depth. With this creator class, you're able to have 10 attachments as opposed to Modern Warfare's just five, but you also have new things that can adjust each one of your weapons. You have things like ammo types, weapon perks and kits, magazine modifications. There is an insane number of ways to increase your weapon attachment performance as well. If the beta is any indication, we'll have values for reference of plus one, one plus two or plus three and even in the minuses as well offering more in terms of those heavy benefits versus what we saw in modern warfare so there's a lot of stuff you can absolutely take a look at in the creator class and then end up going very heavy in how you prefer to build out your weapon also one thing that's beautiful about this expanded creator class is that you can maximize your loadouts and builds to a degree that we have never seen just yet you're not penalized for taking more than five attachments minus where stated outside of those drawbacks you end up seeing with attachment values so unlike, say, Black Ops Cold War, you don't have to sacrifice a wild card to use more attachments. Max that thing out. You have nothing to lose against it outside of just a few attributes that, again, are only changed by your attachment selection. Another tip that can help you out before actually really jumping into the game is make sure you know that you can jump in with some already leveled weapons. For those of you guys that have been playing with Black Ops Cold War and Warzone Season 6, you may have noticed, of course, that you have the STG-44 and the M1 Garand from Call of Duty Vanguard in Warzone. This is something that if you progress that battle, you can earn up to two different blueprints for each of those weapons and the leveling and progression
progression of those actually transfer over into Vanguard. So if you end up doing some contract farming, end up slaying out and plunder, or even just play BR with these weapons of the SDG or the M1, these will rank up and you can go all the way up to level 70 so that when you jump into Vanguard for the very first time here, when you jump in and want to start your weapon grind, you can be head and shoulders above some people that may not actually either use those weapons or that may just not have them unlocked just yet. So you can have that fully kitted weapon from level one. And that's something we've never seen before. So make sure you take advantage of that. And if you're a camo grinder, that's also something that gives you a nice head start as well. Assuming that the camos are unlocked in the same format as what we'd seen in past years with Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare, each of these weapon sort of tiers every five or 10 levels if it follows that same way, that's when you'll end up being able to unlock more weapon camo challenges. So if you have that ranked up already, you can start working on all of your challenges simultaneously from day one and level one. So make sure you're taking advantage of that if you have those unlocked. But talking a little bit about some gameplay tips here, one big thing that reminiscing back, thinking about the beta here and what we had, the TTK of Vanguard is relatively fast by comparison to Black Ops Cold War. It's similar to Modern Warfare, I don't quite know, I haven't tested it explicitly to see if it's anywhere between Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War to see if it's that middle ground or if it's just as fast, but it absolutely is faster than Black Ops Cold War. So what I would suggest is having that gun up mentality. First shot is important. Have your gun up and ready to go. I know that a lot of my deaths in the beta were due to me sprinting into an area like an absolute idiot. And with things like tax sprint being back, that takes double the sprint out time compared to your enemy. So even if they don't have their gun up, they're like going to win that gunfight just because it takes longer for you to get your gun in a firing position. So while I'm not advocating for say camping, I'm advocating for the ability to learn a map, know what positions players may hold, maybe tax sprint up to them. But once you get to that wall where you know somebody might be on the other side, get that gun up and strafe around the corner, being ready for that gunfight, whereas they may not be. So always have that situational awareness going there from level one and beyond that your gun up mentality is going to help you out tremendously. Next, one thing that I think is is going to be crucial for all types of play here is finding your combat pacing. 6v6 is definitely possible, but a lot of the maps actually do play much better for higher player counts. Red Star is probably a great example of this here in the beta. 6v6 was tremendously slow, but when you played things of like, I think 18v18 or did it go up to 24v24? I can't remember off the top of my head. But regardless, those were absolute chaos. Those were great for ranking up weapons, ranking up your overall level XP and things like that. And now with everything in the full offering of the game, being able to complete things like camo challenges. So it's going to be very much so like your ground war for modern warfare, in which that's where I found a lot of my favorite gameplay styles. So find what you enjoy the most. If you like the more tactical pacing of a tactical 6v6 mode, that's totally cool. But if you want that more chaos, maybe you play exclusively towards those blitz modes of 12v12, 18v18, 24v24. Just find what works well for you. Next tip, if you are a camo grinder, one thing that I would highly recommend is doing things like your launchers early, doing things like your riot shield early, those more tedious ones. One thing when it comes down to the launchers is that you're going to have a lot more people using a lot more variable items in their loadouts because they're just not simply ranked up high enough. If you can get your launchers done early on, you're going to find a lot of people not necessarily using the flak jacket equivalent here with this. You're not going to be seeing people explicitly running just things that you can't shoot down. So you'll be able to do all these things that help out because people are experimenting more. They're not necessarily using crutch items like they would say once they're prestige four, five, six, and seven going in throughout the year, because some things are just strictly locked up still for them. So that is something that is going to be way easier if you can get those started at least earlier in the year, as opposed to later. Next tip here is one that unfortunately is just something of a default standard, I think, as of the last two years, the way matchmaking works. That being to party up. Solo play with the matchmaking systems in Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare that's become more and more stressful to enjoy as a casual game. But with higher player count parties from the past years, it seems like matchmaking can't really take the parameters that it normally uses into account and almost throws them out the window and gives you a regular match here because they can't really balance it all, especially if you have a higher skilled party where players are in those higher score per minute, higher KD brackets. I think partying up makes your game not only just more enjoyable because you have some friends at your side that you can joke, you can talk to them, whatever, but also because it does make matchmaking a little bit more balanced 
in your favor. So party up where you have the opportunity here with this. The second to last tip that I want to talk about here in this video is that if you're a Warzone player, make sure you rank up your priority weapons first. We're going to have about a month here until the integration of Vanguard weapons and the shift over to Warzone Pacific, the new map of Caldera, and everything is going to be included in that. So that means that in that sub 30 days, you're going to have 38 weapons total to rank up. Now, whether or not you need to do all of those, that's entirely up to you. Cold War's integration was relatively broken. There were some weapons that I personally didn't expect to be as good as they were, and some weapons that I thought would be better weren't actually as good as what I thought they'd be. But with this game being so much so built around the sort of modern warfare feel, and with Vanguard apparently sharing the same engine now with Warzone come the integration, that's something that might actually be a more direct one-to-one. -one. So that means you may be able to more accurately gauge what weapons you think are more beneficial here to rank up first. I'd personally suggest rifles, SMGs, maybe pistols, maybe say snipers as well for your close, medium, and long range play, but also some things like your LMGs could work. Launchers might not be as much as something you really need to for Warzone integration. Same with shotguns. But again, it all comes down to you. What do you use in Warzone the most? You can make sure you have ranked up so you can use the best builds for those weapons come the Warzone integration. And the final tip here that I'll talk about in regards to Vanguard and the coming launch is experience a bit of everything. We have a game that developers from across multiple different teams of Sledgehammer have poured their heart and soul into, whether that be campaign, whether that be multiplayer, whether that be zombies from the Treyarch Zombies team, experience a little bit of everything here. It's going to be something you'll find some things maybe that are hidden gems that you really enjoyed that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise thought. Or, Oppositely, maybe you thought you'd like something else, but what you thought you'd like, you didn't, and therefore then you can say, okay, well, this was actually enjoyable. We got a full offering of a game here, something that does not come around every single season, like a few DLC maps or a slight Warzone update, so make sure you jump in, try out at least a little bit here if you are purchasing the game, but that said, that is my 10 tips for launch. The game's gonna start going live for everybody across the world here in just a couple of hours, depending on where you're at in the world. For most people here, maybe on the channel, that's probably gonna be around on 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern for you guys. If you're in the UK, you'll get that a couple of hours before us here in North America at midnight local time for you, unless you're on PC, to which that's 5 a.m. in the UK for you. But regardless, launch festivities are kicking up here. We're, of course, going to keep you up to date with everything you need to know. We got three videos going live tomorrow, maybe also on Friday and into Saturday. But regardless, we're going to have so much content that you guys will not want to miss. So that said, let me know your thoughts down below. What are you guys looking forward to jumping into the most here? Campaign, multiplayer, or zombies with the launch of Vanguard. Whatever it is, drop it down below. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a single thing regarding all things Vanguard as we gear up for the launch and what is coming afterwards. So if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those links are down there in the description below. If you guys want to strike up a conversation or ask a question, whatever the case may be, links are there for you to check out. But that said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys online. Take care and peace.